you guys. It's Ryan with DSX Motorsports. And I just wanted to share a little funny story about kind of picking up the trailer and kind of how all that happened going down to Georgia. So, when we first got the RV about a week later, we went down to Georgia to find, actually to pick up this two car stacker. We didn't know much about it. We had some basic pictures. The dude had one picture of it. Didn't know how long this thing was, didn't know how short this thing was. Worried about like the, the overall length and everything of the trailer. Like it was definitely kind of uh, a touch and go situation going down there. But the one thing that we know or knew at least going down there was that the trailer itself was 17,000, which is a lot of money. But in Colorado, like a comparable size trailer was 27,000. Kind of in the middle of the country, they were around 22 to 25,000. We definitely saw one that we really liked in Wisconsin that was, I think, 25,000. Um, was shorter in Avinos, but overall, you know, pretty nice little trailer. But the way we saw it was that we were going to drive all the way to Atlanta to basically save ourselves anywhere from, you know, seven to ten thousand dollars on a trailer. And we're kind of gambling on what the condition was and everything on the trailer since we got such limited information. The only thing that we really got, keep in mind these are email exchanges, were a small handful of pictures and that he refused anything other than cash. So no money order, no cashier's check, nothing like that. So we go down there, uh, my dad goes with me, Frank Spurs goes with me, and um, and then of course we take the docks. So I just got tires to the tray, uh, just got tires to the RV. So the RV was pretty much ready to go. Still hadn't changed the oil or did any service or anything on it. But we figured everything else was looking like it was pretty good. The genset wasn't really working, which it's kind of been going in and out anyway. But uh, uh, so it was it was having its own thing. So we went down there, in the dead heat of uh, Georgia, with really no known air conditioning. So. Frank basically is helping me drive, and so he shares some of the driving. And my dad is kind of has a bad back, hurt his back, so he was basically just providing support, which is awesome because when you're driving, it's nice to have somebody who's making sure you're not falling asleep, and to uh, make sure that uh, you know you have everything you need when you're driving because you really can't get to anything while you're doing it. So. We push off, we fill up in, um, I wanna say buyers, so we stopped at like a gas station and a couple other things uh, uh, and got food and water and some other snacks. It's the basic necessities to kind of get us through the trip. No idea how much fuel this thing holds. Um, we, have an, we have an idea, like we assumed about 100 gallons. No idea really what kind of fuel economy this is gonna get. So we took off, filled up and took off out of buyers. We drive all the way through Kansas, no problems. Um, it was windy, and you could tell like that the front end, like really once you drop the tire off, and it happened with the wind when Frank was driving, once you drop the tire off, it really pulls you, you know, over that uneven concrete. Uh, so one of those times we did get blown and kind of overcompensated a little bit and then dropped the front wheel onto the, you know, off, not off the highway, but off the main highway, and it was like stepped where the median was, or the, the breakdown lane was. So that was kind of an interesting thing, you know, having all that play in that steering box. So either way, so we have no problems going through Kansas. We have no problems going through uh, um, Missouri. We go through Indiana, Illinois, and well, I think, and then we cut down, we might have cut down through actually Illinois, so we didn't go to Indiana. Cut through Illinois, down south through Kentucky. So I think at this point, I'm not exactly sure, there's a Sunday we left. Uh, I'm not exactly sure where we stayed the first night, but we stayed um, in Georgia the sec at least the second night. Um, basically driving at two o'clock in the morning and going and all this other stuff. So we're driving through Kentucky and we get, uh, we stop in Paducah to get some L81. Of course, they never heard of it. They never had seen it before. None of this other nonsense, so they couldn't help us at all with the L8. Just telling Frank about it. My dad was super jazzed about it. You know, it's basically like a Kentucky beverage that it's really, really, really hard to find outside of the state of Kentucky. 
So, and, it, and it's kind of like a ginger ale uh, that's a little bit more carbonated and sweet and full of caffeine. So we get back after fueling up and uh, I think we got fuel in Paducah. So this was like really the first time we got fuel was in Kentucky. And by this point we've already gone like, I wanna say 800 miles, eight, 900 miles. I think it's about 900 miles. And uh, just filling up for the first time, we only put like 84 gallons in it. It's kind of funny. Like I wasn't sure that it was full in there and you know, I got a bunch, I pay, you have to prepay for the fuel if you don't have a fleet card. So I, the thing pops and I'm like, oh man, I was like, I'd really like to get this thing full. And my dad's like, oh, surely it's not that full yet. So he tries to, tries to get it filled up and it's not filling up. And I was like, well, let me go to the other side and vent the gas tank on the other side. So I open that, it's, you can fill on both sides of the RV. So I, I go over there and I open the gas tank and it, you can get the other handle off too. So I pull the other handle and put some fuel into it and it really only took like seven tenths of a gallon. Thing was full. So I put the, put the right side fill up and then literally out of nowhere, fuel just starts gushing out of the passenger side fuel fill. I'm like, oh, holy shit, holy shit. So I run around it and I run around, I was like, he's like, I look over my dad's pumping fuel and he's like, yeah, it's taking some. I was like, stop, stop, stop. Like it was literally, he was pumping it in and it was just pushing it right out the other side. So that was about 10 gallons um, of fuel or at least six or eight gallons of fuel that we kind of made a mess there in Kentucky. We had a good chuckle about it, get on the road. So now we're driving, you know, down towards Nashville and um, we get to a part of the highway where the highways kind of shut down essentially for, I think it was for an accident big like four hour or three hour delay or something crazy. Take that off. And uh, um, so we get off the highway and it just so happened the exit that we got off on for the detour was the exit that I stopped with Nick Stennerford when we got to uh, LA last time. So we went in there and pretty much bought all their LA's, all the cold ones, pretty much everything that they had, which I think was only like four cases. They didn't really know much about what it was we were getting. They thought it was a beer at first, which is really weird because this is Kentucky's beverage, but at least they had it. So we get back on, it's a, basically a two lane road. And in Kentucky, the two lane roads aren't like Colorado or Kansas. These things are twisty and they usually fall on a river of some sort or crossing over rivers and going through hills. And, and on this particular two lane road, it's pretty narrow. And then on both sides of it is probably like a two and a half foot, three foot drop off. So we're driving the RV, everything's going pretty good, not going pretty quick in it. It's not too bad, I mean, there's not a lot of traffic, but the further and further we get into it, the more oncoming traffic we get. So I start to slow down a little bit because I was probably going a little too fast in the RV, so I'm slowing down, and then there's a damn semi, basically like a wheat hauler is what it was, basically on the yellow line driving towards us. And this isn't very wide, so I kind of, I was worried about hitting them, and I slowed down to like 30 miles an hour. I was worried about hitting that. And I moved over what I thought was just a little bit. And the road was so narrow, it dropped the right front tire off on the side of this road. Keep in mind, there's like a two or three foot or more drop off, like off the side of this road. And if any of you guys are from the south or the southeast, you know how common fatalities are, both from like rollovers off the side of the road or people overcompensating and pulling back up and shooting off the other side of the road or hitting somebody head on. So. This is a real situation in the RV. Frank's up front, my dad's kind of laying down in the couch behind the driver's seat and uh, just closing his eyes and resting his back. The dogs are just wherever the dogs are at. And um, we drop that front tire off the road and it pulls the RV down into the ditch. Um, pulls the whole right side anyway into the ditch. Pulls the rear, the rear axle off. So now at this point, I'm, I'm freaking out. Uh, Frank's got himself braced into the, up against the kind of the dash. Uh, my dad just, laying there on his back, kind of holding on. You know, there's really not much that he can do. Just eyes closed. Um, every, all the doors and everything are open and just going super crazy. Uh, cups falling out. We had a couple of uh, UK glasses that were actually wrapped in, that uh, Katrina, uh, Frank's wife, had wrapped in a uh, newspaper. Those things were flying around. Everything was flying around. Um, and then, so now we're basically riding the two wheels, and, like the right side into the ditch. And I'm practically standing up, trying to wrench this thing back up onto the road. And we're slowing down, obviously, slowing down, slowing down. 
but then we're coming to basically a limestone bridge, a, a narrow limestone bridge that goes over a creek. So I'm, like, all I see and all Frank sees is the end of this like limestone, and it's kind of important to mention because it's not just like a metal guardrail. This is like a rock bridge, like with rock guardrails, really pissed off and angry looking. So I'm pulling this thing, literally standing in the seat, trying to get this fucking thing back up on the onto the road. You know, there's still cars coming and everything on the other way. And just before, like just before the rock guardrail, the front end pops up. I was able to get it so it didn't come across and you know hit the other car and then the back end literally the wheel literally climbed up the gutter of the limestone guardrail so it pulls us up back up onto the road and we're doing like 10 miles an hour everything's crazy just it's bananas so we keep going a little ways so because we got to check it out hoping that there's a little pull off and sure enough where those wheat tracks are all getting dispatched huge farm for those wheat trucks so we pull off to the side there we get out this late i get out and literally when i'm opening the door all this stuff is falling out cups dishware all kinds of crazy stuff just falling out into the parking lot and i hop out of there and this lady pulls up typical southern woman she's tanned wearing really nice clothes gold jewelry all over probably in her 50s or so and she rolls down the window on her cadillac and she says, are you all all right? I'm like, yeah, that was super crazy. We all ran off the road. She's like, if that had been me, there'd be poop all over the inside of this car. <laughs> I just couldn't help but laugh. So funny. My dad popped out of the RV. Uh, Frank popped out of the RV. The docks were, Sam was terrified, but he was home the whole time. And Nell was like, wow, that was, wow, that was awesome. So we get out to kind of assess the damage. And this is outside of Paducah, probably... I don't know, 30 minutes or so, uh, south uh, southeast of Paducah. So get out, assess the damage. We see that uh, everything down the side of the truck, as far as we can tell, is fine, with the exception of the outer rear wheel, the outer rear dual. Took a chunk out of the brand new tire, and it bent the rim. It's aluminum, and it bent the rim so bad it was leaking out of it, um, leaking air out of it, and leaking air out of the tire. It's not going to be any real way that we're going to be able to go from there. So we walk into the dispatch office for that, that wheat place, and we ask them for uh, um, ask them if they have because there's a bunch of semis there. If they've got like an on the road tire guy or a mobile tire repair dude that comes out to work on their trucks. So she gave me a number, called those guys, talked to them. They were super cool. They know that these wheat truck guys drive like total assholes, and they're like, "All right, well we don't really have a tire that size." But we do have a used tire off of a bus we can bring out. There's like no guarantees that it's gonna be a good tire. I'm not gonna charge you anything for the tire if you guys are willing to take it. He's like, but we'll send a couple of guys. We don't have a wheel for you guys and we don't really have a new tire. So we'll send a couple of guys out and we'll see if we can't get, can't massage that wheel a little bit to try and get um, it to hold air. Which he knows and keeping in mind that this is aluminum wheel. So usually when you try and bend them back, usually you'll get a big crack in them. So at the time, that was our best bet. So we get, we're looking at the rest of it. My dad's putting all the stuff back up in the cabinets. He's closing and locking all the cabinets and stuff back and um, kind of look out and the driver's side windshield, which is already cracked in the top corner, the driver's side windshield had literally popped out. So it was only just being held across the front and the inside. So the, out, the whole outside was popped out, probably from like the twisting of the, the camper. And uh, um, so I get the ladder out and start working, trying to work the windshield. I go over to the, actually happen to have the snap-on guy over there. Go to the snap-on guy, ask him if they have like any window tools. I called him by name and they looked at me like I was crazy. But it's basically just like a spline setup where you pull like a spline, kind of like on your screen, but this is for a windshield and there's basically like a rubber seal and the seal with the spline and it pushes out enough to hold, typically hold the windshield in really similar to what we used at um, Halliburton. And Halliburton, I mean, those windshields are a lot smaller and they're flat, but you could bust out one of those windshields in like 15 minutes. So pull the spline back. I just end up getting like a, like a hose tool to try and at least be able to work it because we don't really have anything like that. And uh, I'm working on putting the windshield back in. Frank gets under the bus, under the coach, 
and then he's tightening up the gearbox to see if there's anything we can do so that the gearbox doesn't have so much play in it. So he tightens up the gearbox, and while he, while we're doing that, and my dad's kind of running back and forth, he's taking care of the dogs, which is awesome, kind of walking them around and stuff. Uh, and then while we're doing that, the tire guys get there. And pretty with confidence, they walk up and like, yeah, we can fix that. And I'm like, thank God. You know, that they've seen worse or whatever. So they kind of jack up the axle on the, on the truck, but they didn't even take the wheel off, which is crazy. They popped the, the tire, the bad tire off, with the wheel still on the trailer, like on the bus, on the coach. Totally nuts. Keep in mind, we haven't got the trailer yet. Um, so they bust the tire off the trailer, or bust the tire off the wheel, get the new tire onto the wheel, and it's pretty beat. That tire was basically a placeholder. Like there was some tread on it, but it was pretty rough. So we are at this point, we, you know, we're outside of uh, Paducah. We still have to go all the way to Augusta, Georgia. So they bust the tire on, and they're beating on that wheel, and beating on that wheel, and beating on that wheel, <laughs> to the point where like they started off kind of gingerly, then they get to where they're really reefing on it. And I'm like, man, like they worked that wheel for a good 30, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And eventually they got it where it's close enough, they put this, uh, um, like basically this bead sealer, which looked like just really thick black tar. They put this bead sealer in it when they got it close, so they didn't, so they didn't crack the wheel through the bead sealer, and they said, all right, here's the thing. You need to replace this as soon as you can. <laughs> I was like, okay. So we knew we were gonna replace it before we got to uh, Augusta to pick up the trailer. Um, that night we drove to, I, I wanna say, somewhere south of Tennessee, maybe into uh, um, Alabama or something. But then eventually, uh, and stopped. I think actually we made it all the way to Augusta, or near, not Augusta, but just outside of Atlanta. So we stopped outside of Atlanta, at a Loves. They've got a big tire centers there. So they go in there and talk to the guys in the morning about getting a tire. They um, don't have a tire. They don't have a wheel. Well, they don't have an aluminum wheel because that's what was on was aluminum. But he calls a guy, super tool dude, brings out a tire. It's not exactly the right size, but it's a conversion size, which we're already on conversion sizes. So we figured, screw it. Like we don't really have a whole lot of options out here. And then buy a, he didn't have a wheel. So we had to buy a steel wheel from Love's which wasn't too bad, I think it was only like 170 bucks, and then buy this tire from him and then he mounted it for us, which is totally crazy. We went and had it, ate at a diner after all that. I mean, it was a wild time, a wild morning. So then we drive all the way to Augusta, which I think was like only two and a half hours away, and met the guy there to uh, pick up the trailer. So we look the trailer over, we crawl under it, we, uh, uh, I mean, we actuate the door. It's got like basically like a winch actuated door and all this other stuff. And at the time, the owner of the trailer wasn't there, but one of his constituents or one of his employees was there. So he was kind of showing us everything and kind of giving us kind of a tour, telling us what they did with it. And there's a bunch of stuff on it. Like um, there's a bunch of canopies that we really couldn't tell you much about, at least looking at them and, and a bunch of random kind of junk in there. And I kind of made a joke to Frank, like we have to pay extra for the trash or whatever. Oh. I forgot this part. We had to go and get we had to go and get cash, right? So I mark I, from Loves and wherever we are outside of Georgia. I basically mark basically a couple of Wells Fargo's back because that's where I bank. A couple of Wells Fargo's back from Augusta. So if that one doesn't work, then we can head to the next one, and then there's one last one. So we stop at one of these. Um, I think it was the first one that we stopped at anyway, and get there and of course they're not really it's by appointment only inside and of course we can't drive the, tr the RV through the um, through the drive-thru so we tell the lady uh, who's kind of like working security or working the front or whatever we tell her it's like hey we need to get a bunch of cash um, because we're, I'm buying a trailer and the guy refuses to take a money order she's like oh, okay she's like well this by appointment only is like I just don't see, it's like we're traveling all the way from Colorado. We've had a crazy trip so far. Like this is kind of where uh, we just really need to get, we really need to get the cash. And um, so she's like, well, how much is it? And I was like, $17,000. She's like, oh shit. Yeah, you guys really do need in here. I was like, yeah. She's like, well, let me ask them if they can even do that. And so she goes in, talks to the, the bank manager. The bank manager says they can accommodate that 
go inside there and, uh, um, and we wait our turn or whatever. It's just one other lady in there and we get the, the money out. And they're asking us like, is it okay, you know, with mixed bills? Um, what's your first name? What's your last name? Where do you work? What's your guys' address? Where are you from? Just like asking like the, everything about us and which is okay. I get it, you know. And so we withdraw the money uh, in cash and no hundreds, so just fifties and twenties. And, uh, and there's a funny picture of Nell and we kind of stacked them up around her and then drove down the rest of the way to Augusta. So now we're back at Augusta, looking at this trailer, you know, climbing all around it and stuff. It's an older trailer. I think it's like a 2001 or a 2000 model or so. So a little bit, like we didn't know how old it was, but it is like an aluminum floor instead of like an OSB floor. It's got nice solid seat channel all underneath of it. Um, it seems like a super hardy trailer. A big beefy hitch, um, hydraulic jack, and I mean, it, it's big time. The only weird thing about it was that, I mean, it's triple axle. The only weird thing about it was that the GBW on it's like 19.9, and it's probably got enough axle for 21,000, but it doesn't really matter. So then the guy gets there, the owner of the trailer, so we're talking to him, super cool dude, and um, he's talking about the trailer. He's like, oh, they showed you this? I'm like, yeah, I showed you that. And I'm like, yeah, kind of like, kind of excited. Frank and I kind of like poked around and kicked at those things. Like, man, maybe we can get these canopies. This one's a big one. Like there was at least one 10 by 20 in there with a nice with a nice tarp still, and so we try not to make a big deal about it. And so we look at him, he's like, "Hey, do you guys want those? Tar like, want those? Want those things?" I'm like, sure. He's like, "I think we got another one inside if you want it." So he goes and gets another 10 by 10 out of there, and they're pretty heavy duty ones, you know, not super flimsy. Uh, they're not in like the canopies; aren't, they're not clean or beautiful or anything, but in good shape. And uh, so we're like, shoot, yeah, that'd be awesome. He's like, oh, you guys need a hitch? I'm like, well, we brought one with us. Like, oh, we, I've got all the equalizer stuff. I'll just give you the equalizer hitch and the equalizer bars. So we got the equalizer hitch. I'm so glad we got it. And the equalizer bars and all the stuff that, uh, that he used to tow with it. And basically just gave us a whole bunch of stuff. I, I didn't try and um, uh, nickel him down at all. Uh, shouldn't try it. So I just I paid what he was asking for, but we got the, the big ass hitch, the equalizer bars, a couple of nice canopies, and a handful of other stuff. The trailer came with two spares, like two good shaped spares. The tires look good on it. The wheels were cool, aluminum wheels. Like, um, the, and the overall, like the thing was pretty sweet. So we're excited. We get in, um, and then we decide after having driven through like Tennessee and through the mountains and all that stuff that there's no way because we don't have trailer brakes. I brought the brake controller with us in case we absolutely had to wire it in like emergency wire it in but ultimately we were going to try and drive with no brakes. Now we're guessing this thing probably weighs about 11,000 pounds so we didn't want to try and drive in back through the mountains so we ended up going the south route so through obviously through Georgia, through Alabama, through Arkansas, Mississippi, and then up into uh, 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 through Oklahoma, and then back up into Kansas and Kansas to Colorado. So no craziness at all for the trip back. The only thing that was weird is that the trailer lights weren't working. They, they tested them in Augusta, but it's of course it's like 110 degrees. Um, even when we're in Augusta, we're trying to make sure that my little, uh, I have a, 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 a compression brake, like an exhaust brake on it, and uh, we had the bed lifted up, no AC, keep in mind, so we had the bed lifted up in the back, Frank's underneath there just sweating bullets, I'm, I'm running, like basically the, the, the controls up front, we can't get the exhaust, to simulate the exhaust brake to work, so then we get uh, a wire, like just a bare wire, and we're jumping the exhaust brake, so then we start the poor truck up, so Frank and my dad are under the, the bed or the hood where the engine's hat in the back, and I'm up there just revving the snot out of it to see, to make sure that this thing is actuating like it's supposed to. And fortunately it was. Like when we test drove it, when we bought the RV, it got stuck on us and wouldn't release, which basically meant that the tr truck didn't have any power to pull itself. So everything was working good there, so at least we had like the air brakes on the truck, on the RV, and the compression brake in case we really had like a long downhill slope. So um, drive all the way back, literally no problems at all. We uh, had to get a fuel, we got fuel again that day. It got, I, we estimated probably about 10 to 12 miles a gallon without pulling anything, and about six to eight pulling that trailer back. And I think 
The big part of it was the wind, the drag. I mean, it sticks out above the RV, probably about a foot and a half, but not above the tallest part of the RV. Um, thing was about 71 feet long, <laughs> which is crazy. So while we're going across the country, we're looking at to see what states have rules and no rules. And like Oklahoma was just like, no one gives a shit in Mississippi and you know, Arkansas and Oklahoma. And some states were strict or whatever, but it was a good time. We drove all the way back with zero, zero problems. I'm just so excited to get that trailer. And uh, I mean, it, and it's sick. You guys may have already seen some videos of it. Here's a picture of the whole setup. I mean, it's it's huge. And uh, still need to beef up the hitch. Like I've driven it around some since then with just like the Civic or just the E36. And you can tell like driving with a car in it through town initially uh, without brakes. It was definitely heat, like warming the brakes up on the coach. I've since wired the brake controller in. Um, only the front axle brakes are working, so I'm not exactly sure if it's just not sending enough amperage back there, or I, I say working, but I mean like I'm basically pulling the controller in a gravel parking lot to see which tires are locking up. It's just the front axle right now. Um, so they might be getting some other power, but it is a big difference, even with that one, with the boost all the way turned up. You know, we're not flat spotting the tires, actually slowing the trailer down. So it seems to be a good start there. We still have the, the, the 10,000 pound hitch on it. And of course with the car and stuff in it, it's probably weighing about 14,000 pounds. So already Frank, me and Frank measured everything out. Frank's got a plasma cutter. So he's gonna, he measured and has already drawn it up in CAD and everything. And so he's gonna basically cut the end plates that need to be folded and with the holes and everything from the box tubing and we're basically gonna put a, bit, a big beefy ass hitch on it before we really start towing two cars. So once I get the, uh, the big hitch on it, and when I can actually like set this thing up, I'm not super worried about tongue weight and worried about the camper. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll show, do like a walkthrough video. We'll get the tools. There's, I don't know if you can see there's a toolbox in the back that I've got to put in it. Um, we've just picked up a 5,500 watt generator to kind of tow it around in it for um, if we need it to power. Like it's got its own, it doesn't have its own power source, but it's got its, it's all wired. So there's like lights, like fluorescent lights in there. LED lights for the outside. Um, of course, it's got a battery charger and it runs the batteries. Uh, it charges the batteries for like the front landing leg and it uh, has, you know, the four post lift inside of it. And it does uh, like the rear, the rear door isn't spring loaded. So it's all ran by a, a winch. So it's got, I mean, it runs all this stuff off the battery. So we'll have that 5,500 watt that we can, uh, um, plug into that and run a compressor, run maybe a little air conditioner, whatever we want, and, and run it as a backup too for the RV. I mean, as, as you guys can imagine, I mean, I've had this the poor generator running and not running, running and not running three or four times now. And uh, so yeah, I mean, it'll be nice to have at least a little backup. The generator I have is rated for 8,000 watts, uh, and the one that we just bought is rated for 5,500. So. We can at least run one AC in there. You definitely put in one of those little, like uh, kind of those room ACs inside the trailer. But I don't want to get too carried away with the trailer because the scary thing about the trailer is that there's no way out from the inside. So if somebody locks you in, shuts the doors and everything on you on the inside, there's, um, yeah, there's no way out. <laughs> so at least not that I found yet. So I have to figure figure something out there when it gets to it. But um, yeah, so that was the exciting story of getting the trailer. Go ahead and like, follow, subscribe, see what kind of cool stuff we got going on next, and uh, stay tuned.